Hello all, welcome to Public Cloud Design Tips and Tricks again. As a part of Service Mesh, uh, today's topic is AWS App Mesh. The problem statement is same, how to get out of the box observability features for highly dynamic microservice environments. Now coming to what is AWS App Mesh, it is a managed service from AWS which deals with application level networking, service to service communication in various compute infrastructure within AWS. For example, AWS EKS, AWS ECS, Kubernetes on simple EC2. Okay, so these are different flavors where AWS AppMesh comes into picture. Now it provides end-to-end -end visibility of the applications. It enables monitoring capability and ensures high availability of the downstream applications. It comes with the Envoy proxy capabilities. Envoy is an open source, and this also provides a measurement of traffic flow, customization of traffic flow and logging based on your requirement. Okay, so these are the capabilities of AWS App Mesh. Now, if you, on a, on a high level, if you want to know how it looks like, you have a pod actually, pod where the containers run basically in a container orchestration platform. And within that pod, there is a container app where your microservice or your service is running. And the, the App Mesh, is always deals with your envoy proxy a proxy sidecar okay which is which is dealing with all the capability like application monitoring routing uh, logging all these things okay so that is how it looks like and all the traffic that goes into the container app or outside the container app it always travels via the envoy proxy okay now say for an instance if you do not have a service mesh okay so what 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 are the impacts basically so what happens is when a developers write a, write a code or a write a code for a component or a microservice then he or she has to deal with routing logic for service communication observability of the service at any point of time it's it's a kind of a health check logging and tracing capability and various metrics data for data analytics okay so in a nutshell it, he or she needs to handle the infrastructure aspects alongside with the application code, which is also called in process design pattern. Okay. Now, handling of this kind of responsibility results in when you have multiple services, then it's it's become difficult to handle those kind of coupling, those kind of coupling with your microservices code. Now, when the line of code grows or when you have more microservices, it is also difficult to maintain. Now, scaling is always a challenge where you have to deal with different libraries or SDK to deal with this kind of capability, this many capability also. Okay. Now, slowly from an organization perspective or from a from a way of working perspective, it start missing the standardization across the microservices of handling those capabilities. So that these are the disadvantage or demerits when you are not using a service mesh okay so service mesh always decouples all these kind of capabilities or the routing observability logging tracing all these kind of uh, responsibility from the application code in a sidecar proxy that always runs alongside with the application okay now with the service mesh that i have already explain that a sidecar proxy deals with all the points that we have already discussed in the previous slides okay so these sidecar proxies are running alongside with the microservices within a pod environment so the change of traffic now due to introduction of sidecar proxy will be looking like this okay so with a service mesh it is always let's say there is there are two microservices a and b communicating with each other then the traffic always go go out the traffic the outbound traffic from microservice a will always go to the sidecar proxy first and from that sidecar proxy it will connect to another sidecar proxy of the service b okay and finally the request lands into service b so that is how the traffic flow will be looking like when you have a service mesh and it also enables the standardization of analytics logging tra tracing and routing logic running alongside with the microservices. So that is how it, it, it will look like when you have a service mesh capability. Now, 
This is a very high level diagram of edulous atmos. So we discussed what a side car proxy does. And now if you start coupling one side one to one relationship with side car proxy with the container app, then you can create your own logical boundary within AWS to deal with different microservices with those uh, routing, logging, uh, all those capability. Okay, and that comes uh, with AWS app mesh. So this is how it looks like. Now, again, reiterating uh, about AWS app mesh. So each, each of the proxy have their own configuration rule set based on the diagram. The rule set can be pushed using AppMesh API by a developer. So the developer can easily use the AppMesh API to update or create any rule set. The control plan keeps tracks of all the changes for proxy instances. We have already discussed in our previous fundamental session that there are two, two components that basically comes with service mesh is the control plan and data plan. So control plan always keeps tracks of all the configuration changes for sidecar proxy instances. At mass, in turn, the proxy scan even scales the backend apps by updating the configuration rules. So that also you can control using app mass. It also provides, provides a standardization approach and decouples the in-process pattern we have already discussed and it can use across an enterprise to deal with container orchestration platform and microservices. Now, this is the diagram of AWS AppMesh components. So this diagram I have already taken uh, from AWS documentation and I have already given the reference of that particular site. So this is how it looks like. So if you see the box is the logical boundary of the AppMesh where there are three, uh, there are four different kind of components are running virtual service virtual load, virtual router, uh, and a route basically. Okay, so this we will discuss uh, in detail in the next slide. And uh, to connect with that particular logical boundary, you always have a proxy. So the client service, probably a microservice when connect to a different service, it always go to a proxy and the proxy in turn will start connecting to virtual service within the AppMesh boundary and virtual service will have a pointer to the virtual node and virtual node have a discoverable service can be ECS or Kubernetes down, downstream. Okay, so that is how it works. Now coming to the components of AWS SMS, FMS, uh, what is service mesh? A logical boundary of network traffic between the services we have already discussed. The virtual nodes, a logical pointer to discoverable backend services like Kubernetes and ECS services. So if in this diagram, virtual nodes are the blue diagrams. So basically, it, it will always have a pointer to the backend services downstream and also a connect to the virtual services, the orange one. Okay. Uh, now, virtual routers. So basically, what it does is the virtual router is the green one. So what it does when you have a two versions of the same service or the same backend component, then you can always use a virtual router to control the request uh, to the downstream services. For example, let's say you can say the virtual router that my 80% traffic will go to version 2 of service B and 20% traffic can go to service B. Okay, so that is where virtual router comes into picture. So that's why it's a part of routers. It uh, it di directs traffic that matches a service name to fix to one or more, more virtual nodes. So that is root basically. So routes are always attached to a virtual routers and virtual routers comes into picture when virtual service connects to multiple virtual nodes of multiple backend services that we discussed. Okay. Now, what is a virtual service? It is always an abstraction object. It, of the actual service by means of connecting to a virtual node or virtual router. So if you see here, the virtual service is the orange one. Okay, and there are two boxes of virtual service. So it, it, it always have an abstraction how to connect uh, to the virtual nodes. Okay, uh, or in a way the virtual service. Okay, so that is how uh, it works. Now, apart from those, uh, we have AppMesh Sidecar. So AppMesh Sidecar container configures pods to use the AppMesh service mesh traffic rules set up for virtual routers and virtual nodes. 
so that is uh, that is why fms sidecar is used and fms induct injector enables auto inject the fms sidecars into the working ports so these are the capability now if you want to know more about it there are different references link from uh, from aws i have already given one link in one of the slides so please go through the links and try to do some hands on on how to create different components of fms then you will have a better understanding of how it looks like uh, practically okay uh, th that's it for the day thank you and have a good day